Romans. Let's first of all, let's learn what the Bible has to say about the um, the LBGTQ, because some people think that somehow transgenderism um, is not mentioned in the Bible. And those are people that desire to go from one sex to another. This is not just people who decide they want to cross dress. This is people that want to have certain body parts cut off and have certain body parts molded and put on. And even though the word transgender is not in the Bible itself, um, it, the Bible does actually address the idea of transgenderism. So we're going to go to Romans 1, 27 through 30, no, 27 and 28. And then we're going to also go to Deuteronomy 5. These are scriptures that most people, um, if you've been in the church old school, You've heard these before, but if you've been in the church new school, you probably never heard these scriptures at all. So we're going to go to Romans 27, where it says, and likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust toward one another. Men working with men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was me. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Now, there are a couple of words we're going to define, one of which is reprobate and the other one is convenient. Now, we're going to go to the next scripture first, though. Deuteronomy 22.5. It says, and a woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. And that key word in there is garment. For all that did do so are an uh, are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now we're going to define three words so you guys can get an understanding of these two scriptures and, and really understand what how God feels about these um particular lifestyles and reprobate what does reprobate mean because god says that he turns um homosexual men and women over to a reprobate mind and not just homosexual men and women but the list goes on after this to describe those that he give over to a reprobate mind so this is not just limited and uh to those that are in the homosexual lifestyles there are other things that god will give you over to a reprobate mind uh, for as we will learn a little bit later because that is also key the word reprobate now the word reprobate means a depraved unprincipled or wicked person a person rejected by god and beyond hope of salvation so god says in his word that people that do that and they don't retain god in their knowledge god will give them over to a reprobate mind so what he is saying is if these people don't want to retain me in their mind and they want to give themselves over to this sin, he will then give them over to a reprobate mind. And so that means they have a mind that is deprived, unprincipled, and wicked. They have a mind, a thought process that is completely rejected by God and beyond hope of salvation. Now this is God's word. This is God's you know, Bishop Didi saying, I think that they're reprobate. God said he gave them over to a reprobate mind. And people like to throw Old Testament, New Testament. This is New Testament. This is what God says about this particular sin. He will give them over and gave them over to a reprobate mind because they did not like to retain God in their knowledge of, of their sin. So God is very clear here that how he feels about the sin and the result of continuing in that sin is that God will give you over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. So the next word we're going to look up is convenient because what does that mean? Normally when we hear the word convenient, we're, we're, we're thought about, you know, easily accessible, you know, at hand. We're, we're thinking about a different definition, but the word convenient means suitable or agreeable to the needs or purpose 
suited with the respect to the facility or ease in use, favorable. So God says that not only are these people given over to a mind that's depraved, unprincipled, and wicked, rejected by God and beyond, beyond the hope of salvation, is that he will, that will cause them to do things that are not suitable, agreeable, or favorable. So God is very clear as to how he feels about this. And, 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 and when, you know, preachers choose to say what God says about the sin of homosexuality, that people like to accuse you of being ungodly, not having the love of God. You don't love people. You're judging them, but you're not. You're, you're telling them what the word of God says. And that's what it says. So let's go to Deuteronomy 22, um, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now, y'all have heard me speak of, you know, speak about Tyler Perry. And the fact that he made his money off, he made, he built his, his empire off of the character Medea, which is him dressed as a woman. And not only does he have on a woman's dress, he has a woman's makeup, the wig, he even puts on the fake boobs and everything. So, and 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 when I say what the word of God says about that and telling them that that's not of God, people want to, you know, rebuke you, get mad with you, tell you how blessed he is, okay? But that kid, that, that goes against what the word of God says. And, and that is impossible that he's blessed by God to do something that God calls an abomination. God is not going to instruct you to disobey his word. Do I need to say that again? God is not going to instruct you to disobey his word. So let's define a word in this. And I just recently defined this word and got this revelation myself because God had to let me know that transgenderism was addressed in the Bible. And he gave me this scripture, um, Deuteronomy 22, five, and he had me look up the word garment. So I look up the word garment because, you know, I go with my, I lean to my own understanding. The word garment represents clothes. So to understand that scripture, it is saying that a woman should not put on man's clothes and that man shouldn't put on woman's clothes, right? Makes logical sense. But when you look up the word garment, it says any article of clothing is the first definition, but then there's a, a second set, a second definition of the word garment. It says an outer covering or outward appearance. So if we put that definition of the word garment with this scripture, it is saying a woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's outer covering or outward appearance. So transgenderism is specifically spoken against by this particular scripture because transgenderism is you putting on or a person putting on the outward appearance of the opposite sex. You're put a man is taking off his penis and well not taking it off because they don't take it off, but reconstructed into a vagina, which is the outward appearance of something that a woman has. And then they get, um, um, they take estrogen and other hormone pills so they can start to develop boobs and, and limit facial hair and change their voice to become more feminine so they can put on the outward covering and outward appearance of a female and vice versa for a woman. Um, who gets, you know, the male uh, penis put on and, and and takes hormones to get her her boobs reduced and become more masculine and then look more like a man to have the outward covering or outward appearance of a man. And God in his word says that anybody who does that is an abomination unto the Lord thy God. So 